In this video, we're going to be looking at quartiles and a little bit briefly at deciles and percentiles. So if you remember, it takes two extreme values to book in the data into one, one single group. So that's the minimum and maximum, and all the data is at or between those. It takes three half tiles, the minimum, the median, and the maximum, to divide the data into the two halves. So it takes so half the data is from the minimum to the median, and half is from the minute median to the maximum. So if we want to take our data and divide it into force, it's going to take five values to do that. So Q sub K is called the kth quartile. And it's a value so that K force of the data is ranked at or below it at least approximately. So Q sub K is the kth quartile, and it's a value so the K force of the data are ranked at or below it. So Q zero is just the minimum. No data, zero force, is below the minimum. Q four is the maximum. All data, or four force of the data, is at or below Q four, the maximum. Q2 is the median. Two force, or one half of the data, is below Q2. So we have the minimum, median, the maximum. But then we're going to kind of split those in two. So we have Q1, also sometimes known as QL, the first quartile or lower quartile, so that one fourth of the data is ranked below Q1, at least approximately. And Q3, or Q upper, the upper quartile or the third quartile, is the number so that three-fourths of the data is ranked below Q3, at least approximately. I have to kind of say approximately because uh, like just like in the median, half the data is ranked below it. That's approximate. Uh, depends on whether it's even or odd, whether that's exact or approximate. Now, we've already talked about how to find the minimum and maximum and median. It turns, so now all we need to do is figure out how to find Q1 and Q3. Now, there's a little wrinkle here because everyone it does the minimum, maximum, and median the same way. Okay, But the quartiles, Q1 and Q3, uh, those quartiles, the first and third quartiles, there are different methods for using them. So although everyone computes the minimum, median, maximum using the same methods, same rules, there are several different methods for computing the first and third quartiles. For example, Excel, Minitab, and the TI calculators all use different methods for computing Q1 and Q3. And one of the guys who did this to begin with was a guy named Tukey, and he used a fourth method, different from all three of those. In fact, there's a computer program uh, statistical program called SAS, SAS, that has six different methods which can be chosen for computing the quartiles. You can choose which one you like. So the following slide is going to give the details for six different methods of computing Q1 and Q3. Now depending on the data set, some of these result in the same values and some do not result in the same values. But each of the following methods usually produce values which are very close. So the basic interpretation of the quartiles is the same, regardless of which measure method is used. I have written a, a little article about this that I talk about in a uh, further um, video uh, that will be in this playlist. Um, but that's optional for the students in my class um, going over that. Um, so anyway, let's let's take a look at this. So here are six different methods. Okay, now bear with me a minute. Don't don't freak out on me on this just yet. The good news is you don't have to know all six. So method one is used by the TI calculators. Q1 is just the median of the lower half, and Q3 is the median of the upper half, where the median is not counted as part of either half. Tukey's method is similar. The Q1 is the median of the lower half and Q3 is the median of the upper half, but this time the median is counted as a part of each half when n is an odd number. Method 3 
is used by Minitab and SPSS. Q1 has a rank of n plus 1 over 4, and Q3 has a rank of 3 times n plus 1, and then divide by 4, in other words, 3n plus 3 over 4. And when this rank is not a natural number, we use linear interpolation to compute the value. For example, if n is 16, Q1 would have a rank of uh, 16 plus 1 is 17, divided by 4 is 4.25. So Q1 is one fourth of the way between the uh, four, from the fourth data value to the fifth data value. Method four. This is used by Excel. Q1 has a rank of n plus three over four, and Q3 has a rank of three n plus one quantity over four. And when this rank is not a natural number, again use linear interpolation to compute the value. Method five. Q1 has a rank of n plus 2 over 4. Q3 has a rank of 3n plus 2 over 4. And again, when the rank is not a natural number, use <coughs> linear interpolation. <laughs> Finally, uh, method 6, take uh, n plus 1 over 4 and round it off to the nearest natural number to find the rank of Q1. And Take 3n plus 3 divided by 4, round it off to the nearest natural number to find the rank of Q3. So method 6, uh, the quartiles are always data values. Method 5, the quartiles are always ha either, either a data value or halfway between two data values. Method 4 and 3, the, the data it's either um, a data value one-fourth of the way between two, halfway between two data values, or three-fourths of the way between two data values. Method one and two, it's either a data value or halfway between two data values. So each one of these methods has some advantages, and there's an argument why it's a reasonable way to do it. Obviously, some people prefer one method over the other, and obviously, nobody, uh, we haven't come to any kind of... Um, general consensus on the way to compute this. Now the good news is no matter which method you use for most data sets, particularly if it's a large data set, <clears throat> unless something is very unusual, these will all produce values that are relatively close to each other and the basic interpretation is the same. Okay, now here's the good news. The good news is you don't need to know all these methods. You only need to know whichever ones your instructor requires you to do. So if you're in my class, um, we're going to use the same method that's used in the TI calculator. So the TI calculator will actually compute these for us, and that's the method we're going to use. So that, let's go over that method again, because this is the one you have to know. Q1 is the median of the lower half of the data. Do not count the median in the, as being part of the lower half. Q3 is the median of the upper half of the data. Again, do not count the median as being part of the upper half. So you do not have to know other methods of computing the lo lower and upper quartiles, the first and third quartile. However, you need to be aware that using other technology may produce slightly different results. So for example, if you want to do this in Excel and you do it in your TI calculator, they may not come up with exactly the same answer. Depends on the size of the data set, whether they, some of these answers would be the same or not. So uh, keep that in mind that different technologies and different uh, textbooks and different researchers may use slightly different methods. When you do, you do anything dealing with the quartiles, and that includes a couple things that we're going to be doing in the future, the interquartile range and box plots, if you're using them in a real world situation, you should report the method you used. So for example, if you're going to do it the way we do it in class here, uh, in the in your research that you publish, uh, you should say uh, quartiles are computed using the TI calculator method. And that should be sufficient. It's not going to be a big deal for this class because we're going to always use the TI calculator method and uh, that, that, will, that will be uh, the way we do it. Not because that one's necessarily better than the others, but that's the one we have our handheld calculators that we're going to be using 
and it's going to be uh, just so that we can do it the same way every time. Okay, so many ways of doing this. There's at least six ways. You do not have to know those. Instead, just learn this one way for the TI calculator, but be aware that there are other ways of doing it. Be aware that you should re report which way you're doing it when you're doing any kind of research and be aware that if you use different technology you're going to get different answers possibly although they should be pretty close so using the TI calculator method here's the uh, dot plot for the ages of presidents US presidents on their first inauguration this is all the presidents from Washington through Obama and uh, find the quartiles and illustrate them on this dot plot. So see if you can do that now uh, on your own. Press pause and come back when you have uh, your answers worked out. Press pause now. Well we'd already figured out the minimum, that's the lowest, and the maximum, that's the highest. So that's 42 and 69. That's easy. The median we'd already figured out earlier. Notice that there are 43 so 43 plus 1 is 44 divided by 2. That's going to be 22. So the 22nd one from the bottom, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 is the median. It should be 22 from the top as well. Let's double check. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 22, and 1, 22. So if we listed all of these ages in order from lowest to highest, the 22nd one uh, from the bottom or the 22nd one from the top would have been uh, would have been 54. So 54, that 54, is the median. These other 54s are counted as part of the lower half. And this one here, it's not counted as part of the lower half or upper half. Now, how do we find Q1? Well, let's see. There are now 21 things in the lower half. 21 plus 1 is 22 divided by 2 is 11. So the 11th one from the bottom should be the, the Q1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So that one right there, 50 is Q1. So there's 10 below it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And 10 above it in the lower half. So 10 more in the, in the, in the lower half. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay? So likewise, we do 11 from the top should be Q3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So that we see that there's 10 above it in the upper half. And 10 below it in the upper half. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And notice we did not count the median as being part of either half. So that makes the Q150 and the Q358. So how do we interpret this? One-fourth of the data, at least approximately, goes from the minimum to Q1. So one-fourth of the data is in this. The second-fourth of the data is more compact. It just goes between 50 and 54. There's the second-fourth. The third fourth then goes from the median to Q3, from 54 to 58, also pretty compacted there. <clears throat> and then the upper fourth is more spread out. It goes all the way from 58 to 69. So notice that these intervals are not the same length, but they each contain basically the same amount of data. So that's how you compute quartiles. First you do what? Put them in increasing order. Put the data in increasing order. Take the lowest one and the upper one. That's Q0 is also normally called the minimum. Q4 is also called the maximum. Then you take the, you, you take the one that's in the middle of that ranked list. That's the median. It's also known as Q2. Q1, or lower quartile, then is the median of the lower half. Q3 is the median of the upper half. Now, just as we have quartiles, we could also have deciles. Well, deci, quart, quart means four, so we're putting it into quarters. 
Okay, half tiles we're breaking into halves, quartiles into fourths. Deciles will break break it into tenths. So there'll be eleven deciles to break the data into ten parts. D0, D1 up to D10. Now some of these we already know pretty easy of the eleven deciles. D0, of course, is zero tenths below that value, so that's the minimum. Um, ten D10 is ten tenths or at or below that value, so that's the maximum. Let's see, the halfway in between is five D5. D5 is five tenths or one half of the data below it, so D5 is just the median. And similarly, we, we divide these up. <coughs> Again, I'm not going to get into the technicalities of exactly how that's done. There could be multiple methods of that. But we're going to say then that we're going to interpret is approximately k tenths of the data is ranked at or below d sub k. So in other words, six tenths of the data is ranked below d6. More commonly used, we talk about percentiles. So we're talking about a certain percent. Cent is 100. So they're, they're breaking these into hundreds. So they're actually 101 percentiles. Um, now, you need to have a, the data set needs to get <coughs> of a reasonable size before you can start talking about the median. It doesn't have to be very big, but you need, you need I'd say, at least three two or three data points to even talk about a median. When you start talking about quartiles, you're going to need a little bit bigger data set to, for those values of Q1 and Q3 to make any sense at all, but still doesn't have to be very big. But if you're going to start talking about dividing stuff up into hundreds, you're going to need a fairly large data set, over 100 data points. So the percentiles are similar to half tiles, quartiles, and deciles in computation and interpretation. Uh, there are 101 of them. Of course, P0 is, is the minimum. P100 is the maximum. P50 is the 50th percentile. That's also the same as the median. So the 50th percentile, the 5th decile, or the median are all the same thing. It's also the uh, second quartile and the first half tile. Okay, that's all the median. Uh, let's see, the 25th percentile is the first quartile. The 75th percentile is the third quartile. Does that make sense? 75 hundredths of the data or 75% of the data is at or below it. That's three-fourths of the data. Same thing. The third quartile, the 75th percentile is the same thing. Now, percentiles are often reported uh, when you're taking something like a standard exam, standardized exam given by or taken by many other people. And you'll get a score back, something like saying, okay, you scored at the 87th percentile. Does that mean you got 87% of the, of the questions right? No, you might have gotten more than that right or less than that right. This is not a measure of how much, what percentage you got correct. It is a measure of how well you did in comparison to the other people who took the test. So scoring at the 87th percentile means that uh, you scored at or above the level uh, reached by 87% of the people. So in other words, you, you outscored 87% of the people. You're pretty good. You're well above average if you did that. And in our next video, we'll talk about a box plot or a box and whiskers plot, which will give us a way of visualizing the uh, quartiles.